A very good morning from Davy Crockett Ranch. I'm gonna have a guided tour here. Good morning and welcome to the Davy Crockett Ranch. How are everyone? Uh, just who is David Crockett? Uh, if any of you come from the States or are interested in the, the history of the States, probably you know who David Crockett was. Uh, but for me, as a Spanish guy who is not very much into American history, I was like, David Crockett? I mean, Disneyland, yeah, I know Mickey Mouse, I know all the characters. David Crockett, I don't know him from Adam. So basically, uh, I had to do some research and find out that David Crockett apparently was one of the most important pioneers of the States. And you'd think, well, what does this have to do with, with Walt Disney? TV show. Exactly. Well, somebody's done their homework and their research. But why did we do the TV show? Because, uh, actually, David Crockett died in 1836 and Walt Disney was born in 1901. Actually, they weren't very separate uh, in, in time between them uh, and the, the age of the pioneers was dying when Walt Disney was born so you've got this sort of little nostalgia uh, working there and uh, the big open spaces and all the traveling in, in the far west etc that's what uh, the David Crockett campgrounds uh, mean to Walt Disney. So this ties in with the concept of Frontierland. The very first Frontierland that opened in the States was actually just an open space where you travel by horse and you travel by cart, etc. Uh, nothing to do with what we've got today. <laughs> but this was the concept that we wanted to keep. That's why our cabins, which you'll see behind you and we will visit later on, don't worry, uh, are all inside the forest and in here you've got the open space of what would be the village. Put in place to uh, bring you to the far west, so we put lampposts, which are uh, not exactly from the age because they work with electricity, but they try to imitate the, the, the models of the age. All our signposts are in totems. Of course, the welcome sign for reception, the wood, the little animals in wood. This roundabout we've got over to the left, it's actually called Chippendales Roundabout, if you can guess why. <laughs> actually the little plant thingies are not finished, they're growing still. Mm. Hopefully for March they'll be completely grown. So the guests will have left their horses parked over here and they'll just walk the same path you're walking. Now, the Daily Crockett Ranch is based on several concepts. One concept is nature, the other concept is, of course, uh, David Crockett. But for the nature, we've got a little park, uh, park course, <laughs> a little walkabout in the ranch. You, you'll see those little signs all over the, the hotel. Here we've got a little uh, hotel for insects. Now, it's not just any sort of insect, it's the insects that help. Uh, the farmers grow stuff, so we're concentrating on what's the pollinization of plants, etc. And as you come out, we'll go and see the bear. So you're already looking at the bear, this scared faces. Don't worry, he won't attack you. So there's many things to say about the ranch. Uh, we could actually say them in about 15 minutes. I'll try to extend it to 45. Here in the reception, uh, we've got our welcome desk and our trappers who work at the reception. We'll just go in, there's a bit of, plenty of arrivals today, so there might be a bit of queue. I won't be able to talk very much in the reception uh, because with interference of everybody speaking, it might just, make you crazy in your ears but look at everything that's on the walls and I'll make a comment as we come out okay let's go in please go in and to the right 
So at least you can see and take some pictures and images, okay? of David Crockett, just behind the reception, and the items used for farming in, and plowing in uh, the Pioneer's Age. Also you can notice the lamps and the little um, drawings along the reception. Let's distinguish the real fans from those who are not. What does this bear symbolize? Where does it come from? Does anybody know? Anybody want to raise their hands? Anybody want to risk it? Oh, we've got a hand. We've got a hand over there. <laughs> yeah, where, where does this bear come from? Okay, uh, you answered the technical question, I was like, asking the theme question. D Davy Crockett killed him when he was only three. Exactly! Wow. That comes from the ballad of the Davy Crockett. Uh, it was actually created for uh, the first movie. There was a, a section in the movie where they're rowing uh, along the river. And uh, Walt Disney thought it was a bit boring, just watching guys rowing. And he decided they needed a song. So the same composer who did several other songs for, for Walt Disney made the song of the Ballad of David Crockett. And one of the things is that when he was three, he killed a bear. I find that hard to believe, unless it was by accident. But, well, there you go. That's why we have a bear here. Now, we are in Davy's farm. Now, this represents the farm areas, the farm zones that the pioneers would have with their own cabins, their log cabins, how everything would be built. Now, in here, we've got what we call the pony farm just behind me and in summer we have ponies that come along and do tours for the children also back 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 when uh, the David Crockett Ranch opened in 91 92 we well it, it opened in 92 but we were here already in 91 and uh, we had little animals uh, to interact with the children but of course with the evolving of the ages we can't keep the animals here just for that anymore so we have ponies that will do tours for children. Don't miss the little decorations you've got here on the side. You've got wagon wheels. Everywhere, if you look in the little corners, you'll find even the lamps. They're not just any sort of lamps. Okay, you cheat there. Let me keep. <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> Right behind me, we've got the Junior Ranchers Playground. Ranchers as in the son of a guy who works in the ranch, not a, ra a ranger. And basically you've got swings, the little fort, etc. Next to me, you've got the mini golf and the lucky raccoon. The lucky raccoon is called like that because it's the only raccoon that escaped David Crockett and didn't become his hat, like the one I'm wearing myself. Now, inside the Lucky Raccoon, you've got modern games, so it's just another activity. So, does anybody know where Davy Crockett died? Yes, very well. In Fort Alamo, in 1836, as we said. Now, how many of you know what Fort Alamo looks like? Um, Have you seen pictures? It's Did you watch the movie? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Well, you have to <laughs> take my word for it because you probably won't remember. But the actual facade of the building, of the Alamo trading post, it's the same facade as you had the entrance of Fort Alamo before it was destroyed. Well, of course, Fort Alamo was built in stone, not in wood, and, uh, but the entrance itself is exactly the same. And 
follow me. Over to the left, we've got the um, oh, where they come? Uh, the the fire. Okay, well, just call it the fire. Uh, we'll talk more about it in a minute when we come out of the shop. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour. I'll let you note that all our signs are customized. So that's little Davy Crockett posting a letter. So, one of the first questions we get asked as soon as you, people walk in here is, are they real? And the answer is, yes, they are. For those just coming in, I'm talking about the lab. To continue with the theme of the Pioneer Age and David Crockett, of course, please just check <coughs> on the top sides of the shop. <coughs> All the um, things that you would find in a trading post, or that we've considered that you'd find in a trading post. So this is not what people would use in a day-to-day -day living, it's just what they'd have uh, as furniture in their trading posts. This is also one of the biggest shops I've stayed here when I was 11 or something. However, the model, we've only changed one of the models uh, since we opened, and but since then it stayed the same model oh, all the time. The same layout. The yeah, same layout, etc. Et it's cool. But uh, indeed, we will be. I'm advancing things here. Maybe I shouldn't say, <laughs> but we are looking into getting uh, the next generation of bungalows. I don't know what do they look like. I don't have any more information. This is like uh, what I've heard and it's very interesting yeah we're all very hopeful Ooh, okay and so soon already and so, so soon. yeah yeah cool Ooh, so good. shall we move on uh, let's yes. go like it, then. the thing is you'd have your own little cabins you'd have your own houses and everything you could cook inside your house you could have uh, a warm fire inside your house but people would still join in massive campfires outside to uh, speak, share information and just socialize in the evenings. In the mornings you'd be working hard, either hunting or farming or taking care of your cattle. Uh, so you only had the evenings to uh, socialize and there was no electricity, at least not everywhere in, in the frontier land. So you'd have to uh, share a big campfire like this so you could have some light, security, and also socialize with your, your with your peers, with your colleagues. Okay, so that's the reason why we have it. And every night we light it up and invite our guests to socialize around it. So now we're cheating a bit because the saloon only opens after 6 o'clock afternoon. But I've asked my colleagues to let us in. So please not go into the bar and serve yourselves any drinks. So one of the rarities, oddities that you will not see anywhere else in Disney nowadays is if you look just over there, what's that? A rifle. Now, uh, since a few years back, we removed 
you just need all sorts of weapons, memorabilia and stuff like that. However, Davy's uh, hunting rifle remained with us and it's the only one you'll see in Disney as far as I know. Uh, why is this called the uh, Crockett Saloon? Well, I don't know if you know, but David Crockett's dad had a saloon and a tavern. And this is really based on a historical fact. So we have a, a David Crockett's saloon. And another thing that you'll see is the decorations. So they are real patchwork done by hand on both sides. Now we used to have a lot of them in, in the whole ranch and uh, now there's only about six of them left because of the deterioration. As you do things by hand, you know, they don't last that long. Also you've got all around us, uh, horse saddles and uh, mining utensils and stuff that people would carry with them in their pioneering job. <laughs> do you have any questions up now? No, so, this building over here to the right, or to your left, is actually the restaurant and the swim pool, the Blue Springs pool. Look at it, but don't touch, we're not going there yet. Over to uh, the other side, in front of you, here we've got the tennis court. Uh, the pioneers did not play tennis, that is a proven fact, I checked on Wikipedia. However, we do have the facilities for our guests to play tennis. Now, I said earlier that one of the big themes in uh, our hotel is nature. And of course, up to now, you haven't seen much nature beside myself. So I will be showing you another big area that we've got here. This little hill over to the right is dedicated, it's an enclosed area, and it's dedicated to some sheep. Now, it's a species of sheep that are not raised for their meat or their wool. So since they're of no economic interest, they're actually dying off uh, by extinction. So what we did is we built this enclosure here and we've got uh, last count eight and a half uh, animals who live here in the, in the pasture. Uh, actually it's a hill so it goes all the way around there. Can we also see them or are they? They're very shy today. <laughs> so unless you're feeling very, very adventurous, but um, for your own security, I'm not recommending it. You could jump over and try and see them, but uh, they're very territorial also. Last time we went in to cut the, the, um, the, grass, the green, uh. the grass, thank you very much. Last time we went to cut, cut some of the grass here and plant some, some more because when they eat, they actually take the roots off. Uh, one of our uh, employees actually had to run away from them because they were looking at him like, what are you doing in our house? All our bungalows have their own barbecue, so sadly not many people come over here and use this barbecue. Uh, but for big groups, they could uh, use that barbecue for everybody. Now, where we're standing here, I'm allergic to bees personally, so I will not be going close. But over there to the left, we've got bees. There's a little enclosure over there, so I invite you to walk over if you're a fan of bees. And uh, basically, we grow them and we have our own honey. All right. So, and, and they're, they're all there? They're all there. Okay. In, li in the little enclosures. Normally, they don't come out, but since I'm allergic, I'm just not what? going any anywhere close to it. Sorry. So, we can walk up? Yes, you can walk, indeed. As you're walking up there, you can see over to the left this little river and the canoe, who's, which is also there. It used to be fully functional. I'm not really sure if it still works, but if you want to try it in the small river, you're welcome. On oh, the other side of the river, we've got our native Indian village. 
we put the tipis on and off depending to uh, according to the season now we've only got one tipi uh, prepared but uh, when the season is uh, more appropriate or the weather uh, accompanies us we've got all the tipis that are covered and available to visit nobody sleeps here I'm sorry and you could try but it's very cold and it's all set up in a round area just like they would uh, do it uh, in the States we'll go and see uh, the biggest attraction of our hotel which is the swim pool can I ask you a question? You can ask two questions um, if you want. I, don't, I, I missed a small part, maybe you already mentioned it, but is it true that the honey that is um, created here, mm -hmm. you can buy them in the shops as well? Indeed, you can buy them in most of the shops uh, in the Disneyland hotels. Yeah. And uh, I don't know the price, but you could. They're, they're the little, the little, yeah, I think I saw them uh, in the park. It's actually right? marked as Disneyland uh, honey. Yes, oh, so that's the honey that comes from here. Well, there, there's several. Um, honey panels uh, that we've got in Disney this is just uh -huh. one of them oh yeah but uh, in, I think there's another hotel and behind uh, the backstage area we also have a big one okay oh, it's very good honey I we had we bought it twice it's very nice I don't know if any of you is an expert in trees but you'll have seen that there's many different types of trees actually in the whole area they're all compatible with each other and they've all been taken from the works of Village Nature next to us and replanted here. So there was no tree killed at all when doing the works. And there you go, it's back. Our restaurant is open from 6 o'clock in the afternoon until 10 o'clock at night. Well, 11 o'clock, but the last service is at 10 o'clock at night. And it's uh, all you can eat buffet. Ah, there you go. Please come in. So this is the entrance where you would go in if you were going to swim. Mm -hmm. Sadly, we don't have enough time for you to swim. <laughs> so you will follow me. Walk into the best swim pool of Disneyland Paris. I can say that. that flag here I don't well when the eagle is looking right it's times of peace oh. when the eagle is looking left it's times of war now this side is the blue side is the peace side if you turned it around oh. the on the other side the eagle looks left and it's got the war sign if you want so and you've got a similar one at the entrance of the White House from here we will be moving on to the cabins. each other. This is how they built their little camps and villages uh, in the era. Basically each person has two neighbors that will watch for them in case anything happens all the time. And you've got a house in front of you also. So you've got the two neighbors next to you and a house in front of you also. Not too close so everybody has their own privacy but close enough that if there's anything any problems your neighbors would be there for you. And that is how they built it then. That's how we build it today. A roundup, like the exactly. Like the wagons. Exactly, the same concept. Yes. So when 
time they were traveling in a cab uh, caravan from uh, the East Coast to the West Coast. We got to the break for the cut. Now, we are not like a traffic hotel where you go and sit down and have your breakfast. You'll come collect your breakfast here in little baskets and take them with you back to your bungalow, back to your cabin, and set it up for your family there, just like you do at home. We are not going to visit this bungalow, but I want you to see, notice the entrance. It's a ramp. Now, we've got several bungalows like these, several cabins like this, which are adapted for uh, people with wheelchairs or problems walking. Oh, okay. okay. The cabin we are going to visit has steps, but no please that we have adapted bungalows. So, when you arrive to your cabin, what's the first thing you notice? Barbecue. <laughs> your barbecue, exactly. Now, sadly, in winter, not many people use a barbecue. Uh, what we do is, just about the end, beginning of March, we go through all the bungalows, we make sure that the barbecues are ready for the summer season. Because in summer, like many, many, many people come over to do their weekends here and spend it with their friends, family, just do the barbecue. You notice everything is wood. The sliding door where, which actually in summer allows you to have all the air inside. Over to the left, you've got the master bedroom with its own uh, toilet and suite and shower. That actually makes it very, very interesting for the cabin. And the other, or you can use the couch. So you'll notice a bit <coughs> the difference between the other hotels and ours. This is a bit more rustic, more um, camping-y sort of style. And you might think, well, does this bring people? I mean, you've got so many options. Why come over here? I'll tell you, last year we had over 78% occupation all through the year. We are very, very popular with the French who come over for their weekends and uh, Belgium, Netherlands, they all love to come here. We are conveniently close enough yes. to come by car. And as I said, people who are independent, who love to take charge of their holiday, I come and go whenever I want. With the tickets, with the Magic Pass, you can go in and out of the park however you want. So many people will come along and take charge of their holidays. You know, I'll decide when I'm going to the park in the morning at seven o'clock in the morning, to be the first one at the door at 8.30. Then I'll come out, have my lunch. As you see, you've got the kitchen. Have my lunch at home, like at home. Uh, it's also very popular with the people who have allergies. Uh, when you have a problem with allergies, uh, if anybody here has any family member or is himself allergic to anything, you know it's a problem. Having to go and find a specific place that caters to your al allergy. However, here, you just do it yourself. So, Excuse me. And I like that you can buy your bottle of wine in the shop and uh, drink it here on your own uh, terrace. I exactly. mean, I, I can see myself uh, uh, sitting here. Right and <laughs> in winter, this works as a fridge also. Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. For my colleagues, I'm pretty sure they are very... The biggest difference you notice as you walk in is the open space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The biggest problem that you'll notice as you walk in is that it only sleeps four people. Five if the fifth person is three.
So you've got the room with the double bed and the bunk beds here. The kitchen is also adapted, the sink, everything is, you know, do you probably want to have a real oven again? Uh, we are trying to reduce the intake of power uh, of the, the only of <laughs> paper and food. That's something that our guests demanded to, to have the tree selective. Uh, just, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know how to say it in English, yeah, sorry. Separation of, uh, yeah, the separation of the rubbishes. Uh, so it was actually our guests that demanded that. And we started putting in in two of our loops to see if everybody participated. It's actually been an amazing success. And uh, that means that for, for this year, our project is to do it in all the loops, put outside all the bungalows, uh, the separation of the three rubbish bins, so everybody can participate. So it's really, really interesting for us uh, to do all these things, because as I said, it, one of the biggest themes for us is the nature and mm -hmm. being in, in, in the forest. Um, I remember last year in autumn, uh, there was, you know what happens in autumn? Leaves fall and fruits fall from the trees. We had uh, a lady come and see us and she said, I can't sleep. There's things falling all the time from the trees on, on top of my bungalow. And basically, and basically the, the poor madam just couldn't sleep at all because we are in the middle of nature. And it's one of the things to expect when you come over to nature. Uh, another thing that we had is uh, some uh, young child called us the other day, well, the other day about two months ago, <laughs> uh, who was very, really scared because he had seen uh, a beach, a deer, a deer, just outside his window. She was actually walking through the, the loops. Now there's a small family of three uh, deer that live around here. We don't we don't know where, but they they come and go as they as they please. Uh, we've noticed uh, two little holes that uh, are jumpable, uh, let's say, further away, just behind the, the loops 100 and 200, and we think they come and jump through there, uh, but we've never been able to catch them, and we don't want to catch them, it's just, you know, at least yeah. see them, and uh, two of our uh, cast members, two of our trappers actually managed to take pictures, and we've got them <laughs> in the, the reception, but yeah, you see, that's the thing of coming to the nature, you, you've got yeah. all these things to expect. Uh, talking about nature and the environment, yeah. the, uh, we uh, we have friends who are very into uh, separation and recycling. Mm -hmm. They uh, started driving electrically. Uh, uh, is there, in, in what time in the future are there uh, charges at the cabins for electrical That's a, cars? I'm actually very happy that you're asking me that. This year we've changed all our cars to electric cars in Disney, mm -hmm. in our hotel. We, ha we used to have something like uh, 18 cars. Uh, that all run by petrol. Now they're all run electrically, mm -hmm. and we've done the installation for uh, our side, uh, for the, uh, the backstage, for the uh, charging all our cars. And as you see, all the little um, cars that you put right behind you there, they're also all electric. But for the for the for, for, the, for the guests, for the guests that is uh, something that it's coming. I know I can tell you for sure that it's coming. We are planning it. However, I can't give you dates because it's a very big project also for the guests. Yeah. Uh, do we do it in each bungalow? Do we do it only in the main parking? Mm. How is it going to work? How many places do we uh, make for everybody? I remind you that we've got over 580 bungalows. That means 580 cars. Do we put 580 plugs? Um, so there's a lot of logistics to think about all this behind. So it's not that simple. Uh, but it is a project that we want to do. I mean, as I said, uh, the whole of Disney and us especially we are very much into uh, sustainability and, and uh, working with nature, yeah. not against it. 